LibreOffice is a fantastic office suite. It's available for all the common operating systems, such as macOS, Windows, and of course, Linux. In fact, the majority of Linux distributions that cater to desktop users actually ship LibreOffice by default. LibreOffice itself includes all of the core components that you would expect in an Office suite, components such as a word processor, the ability to create spreadsheets, and also presentations as well. So all of that sounds pretty good, right? But why is it that so many people out there think that LibreOffice just doesn't measure up to Microsoft Office, with some people even going as far as to call it inferior? Well, that's going to be the topic for today's video. What I'm going to do is set the record straight once and for all that any claims that are made that LibreOffice isn't as good as Microsoft Office are completely false. And you know what? I'm going to prove it. Right here, I have an entire book that I've written using LibreOffice. So if LibreOffice is as bad as people make it out to be, then this book right here, well, it wouldn't exist. Let's do some myth busting. Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about LibreOffice, specifically the myth that LibreOffice isn't as good as Microsoft Office, and some people even claim that you should avoid using LibreOffice, and none of that is true, so in today's video, we're going to talk about why that mindset exists in the first place, and I'm going to set the record straight. But before I get into that, I just need to take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video, which is Linode. And Linode has been a sponsor of Learn Linux TV for quite a while, and I couldn't be more pleased with their service. Linode itself is a Linux-focused cloud server provider, and they have Linux servers available for as low as $5 a month. And to make that even better, they have all the common distributions available on their platform. So if you want to spin up a Fedora instance, maybe a Debian instance, perhaps Ubuntu, even Arch Linux, you could definitely do that on their platform. You could use their service to spin up your own blog, maybe set up a website, a Minecraft server, a WireGuard server, maybe even something like Nextcloud, which is something that's featured quite often on this channel. Now, if you don't already have your own account on Linode's platform, then what I'd like you to do is use the URL that you see on the screen right now to set yourself up with a new account. That'll actually help support Learn Linux TV because you'll be letting Linode know that you heard about them through Learn Linux TV. But what you'll get in return for doing that is $100 in credit towards your new account. And that credit is good for up to 60 days. So you can spin up a bunch of servers on their platform with that credit and have some fun. Maybe you'll go through the various tutorials that are available on this channel so you can learn some Linux. In fact, for each of the server distributions that I cover on this channel, they're all supported on the Notes platform. And to make the deal even sweeter, their platform is very easy to use. They have a great dashboard, easy to understand billing, and all the features that you would expect from a cloud provider, including, but not limited to, virtual machines, containers, object storage, block storage, DNS, load balancing, and more. So thank you so much to Linode for sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate it. Now let's talk LibreOffice. Now one question that I want to cover right now before we get into the main topic at hand is, is it the case that some open source equivalents are not as good as their proprietary counterparts? Well, unfortunately, yes, of course that's true. There's no one rule when it comes to software, so it would be a big statistical anomaly if Every single open source application was better than their proprietary counterpart. Now, the thing is, many of them are. LibreOffice is fantastic, like we're about to talk about. GIMP is a piece of software that I use on a regular basis. It's the open source equivalent to Photoshop, for example. And many people will say that GIMP isn't going to measure up to Photoshop and that nobody should use it. Just go ahead and use Photoshop. But the thing is, Photoshop is expensive. There's a monthly fee. And in my case, I've never actually had a problem with GIMP. I've never missed Photoshop. I've never had a problem. In fact, I think GIMP is great. But on the other hand, there are some applications that are open source equivalents to something proprietary that didn't work out well for me. And Caden Live is a good example of that. Now, no offense to Caden Live. I mean, it's a great project, a great piece of software. But what I've found is that it doesn't really scale well to 4K video rendering. And GPU rendering isn't really all that reliable as of this particular time. So Caden Live, unfortunately, was not something that I could continue using. So I had to actually stop using that and use something proprietary, in my case, DaVinci Resolve. I gave Caden Live a big chance. Actually, I used it for several years. So it definitely served its purpose. But for me, 
that was an example of a piece of software that was actually kind of challenging to use. In addition to the fact that it didn't scale well to 4K rendering, it also crashes quite often, and there's some other problems with it that I won't get into. I wish the project well, and I'm sure that eventually they'll fix those bugs. But for right now, I needed to use something that actually works, so that's why I decided to go with DaVinci Resolve. So there's an example of an open source application that, in my opinion, doesn't really measure up to the proprietary applications out there. But LibreOffice is definitely a great example of an open source application and a free application that absolutely measures up to its proprietary counterpart, in this case, Microsoft Office. Now, if you're one of those people out there that feel like LibreOffice is not going to measure up to Microsoft Office, again, keep in mind, I wrote an entire book with LibreOffice. So any claims that LibreOffice is not a good Office suite are automatically proven false by the existence of this book right here. So end of story, LibreOffice is totally fine. And while I was writing that book, the process entailed sending chapters back and forth between myself and my publisher. So I would write a chapter in LibreOffice, send it to my publisher. They would add some comments in the actual file itself, and they would do that in Microsoft Office. They would save the file, of course, and then send it back to me. I would reopen the file in LibreOffice, answer their comments, and we just went back and forth for the entire writing process, and not once did we run into a single compatibility issue, not one time. But all things considered, I mean, why is the general opinion out there that LibreOffice has issues? And here I am telling you that I had no issues and everything was fine. So why is it that so many people out there seem to feel that LibreOffice just can't measure up to Microsoft Office? Well, one of the big reasons why people feel this way is because at one time, it actually was a true claim. There really was a time where LibreOffice was just a pain to use. It was tedious, especially if you were saving files in the Microsoft format. What could happen is a document could become corrupted. That was a very real problem, something that people actually had to endure. And believe me, having to manually fix a corrupted document is not a fun process. In fact, it's one of the worst things that you could ever work on. Even if you save a document in LibreOffice using the Microsoft Office format, corruption might still occur. And that's been the case for quite a while. Nowadays, though, that's no longer true. LibreOffice has fixed their Office compatibility. They've been doing that in every release. Every single release of LibreOffice actually improves compatibility with Microsoft Office. Now, that's a very important point that I want you to keep in mind through the rest of the video, because I am going to be coming back to that point. Now, the other reason why a lot of people out there feel like LibreOffice isn't as good as Microsoft Office is because of people within the Linux community, believe it or not. As you probably already know, a Linux distribution is a combination of the Linux kernel itself and many tools, utilities, libraries, and applications that together form a distribution of Linux, which is equivalent to an operating system as most people think of one. While that in and of itself isn't a problem, the actual issue here that impacts LibreOffice is that some distributions ship extremely old versions of software. And since LibreOffice comes bundled with most distributions out of the box, what that ends up creating is an inconsistent experience within the Linux community. For example, take Ubuntu 2204, which is the latest version of Ubuntu as of the time I'm recording this video. 2210 is actually due out soon, but Ubuntu 2204 is the latest version. Ubuntu 2204 itself ships LibreOffice version 7.3, and that version is one major version behind Upstream. So by using Ubuntu 2204's built-in version of LibreOffice, you're already at a disadvantage. The version that you have isn't the most current. Due to that, any improvements that were made in LibreOffice in terms of Microsoft Office compatibility in the latest version, those are features that you're not going to have if you're using the implementation that Ubuntu gives you, which is version 7.3. But that's not even the worst offender here. Debian Stable, on the other hand, is several major versions behind. So essentially, if you were to gather a bunch of Linux users into one room, and then ask them each about their experience with LibreOffice, you'd get different answers every single time. For example, if someone's using a rolling distro, in that case, they probably have the latest and greatest LibreOffice. To them, they probably have no problem at all. But if you were to ask somebody that's using Debian Stable, then they're probably going to tell you that the experience is completely terrible, compatibility is bad, and all of that, basically just because they're using an older version and pretty much everybody uses the version of LibreOffice that comes with their distro, and they don't really think about it beyond that. So to them, it just doesn't work. But then again, the answer is going to be different from one person to the next. So one of the things that really gets me, you know, very irritated here 
is that distributions will give you the oldest versions of software that they can because they think like it's going to improve stability or something like that, which is completely untrue. But what they're actually doing is causing a major problem. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that not everybody wants bleeding edge software. That makes total sense. But in my opinion, when it comes to LibreOffice, that's not optional. You have to have the latest version. Do not use an older one. I understand you might hate bleeding edge software, but LibreOffice needs to be completely up to date. Otherwise, you're just going to miss out on all the improvements that's actually in new versions of LibreOffice, especially compatibility with Microsoft Office. In fact, I'll even go as far as to say that in my personal opinion, and it might not be a popular opinion, but it is my opinion, any distribution that ships an older version of LibreOffice, it does nothing to keep it up to date. They're doing a major disservice to you, the Linux user, and also the entire Linux community. Not just that, they're doing a disservice to LibreOffice as well because they're helping to create that mentality that LibreOffice is not compatible, even though it's not true. You're just probably using an older version. So at this point, you might be wondering then um, what version of LibreOffice I'm using or from what source am I getting my copy of LibreOffice from? Well, I'm using the Flatpak version because in my opinion, if the distribution can't be bothered to keep that up to date for you, which is what they absolutely should be doing, there's no excuse, then I'm just going to take matters into my own hands and make sure that I have the latest version. So for me, I just use the Flatpak version and it gets the job done. Now, if you were to use the latest version of LibreOffice, does that mean you'll have no bugs whatsoever? Well, to be fair, there's no such thing as software that has no bugs. All software has bugs. And LibreOffice is not going to be exempt from that. It's going to have bugs as well. It's just that with a newer version, you'll have fewer bugs. And in my case, well, again, I haven't run into an issue at all. In fact, I can't even remember the last time that I've run into an issue on LibreOffice. It's been completely flawless. But then again, maybe for you, you'll run into a bug that does happen. And if you do run into a bug, I hope you'll report it. That way, the Document Foundation, the company that actually steers LibreOffice, they'll know about that bug and maybe they'll be able to take a look at that for you. That would be a great thing for you to do to submit a bug report if you run into a problem. But at the very least, run the latest version of LibreOffice and you should be fine. Now, of course, there's another reason why LibreOffice might have this mentality in the community. And this isn't just the Linux community anymore. Actually, I'm just talking about computer users in general. And that's because a lot of people just hate change. And for people like that, I mean, there's no software out there that's ever going to pass their tests. If it's not what they're already using, they're not interested. They don't want to try a new Office Suite. They couldn't be possibly less interested in that. So they just want to keep using whatever they're using. So if they try LibreOffice, maybe someone just keeps pressuring them into trying it over and over again. And then one day they're like, fine, I'll try it, I'll try it. When they notice one little thing that just rubs them the wrong way, they're just going to say it sucks. They're never going to try it again because they were never interested in trying new software in the first place. So that has nothing to do with LibreOffice. I mean, you could put any piece of software in front of them. That's not what they were already using and they'll still hate it all the same. So there are people out there that just hate change. But when it comes to office workers, I mean, that's actually even worse because they're creating documents every single day. And to be honest, they're probably just not interested in learning anything anyway, because they're probably overwhelmed and overworked. And the whole notion of trying a new piece of software probably just makes them anxious. It makes them assume that they're going to be stuck at work a few hours later than they normally would be. So that's another reason why they might not be interested. But that's all not related to LibreOffice. It's just the working world and how it is. Also how some people are, you know, we generally don't like change. I mean, I love change. It's why I actually do this channel. I just love to check out new software and see what's coming. For a lot of people out there, they don't care about software the same way that we do. They just use software as a means to an end. They just want to get their work done. And to them, they really don't care about the politics of free, open source, proprietary. None of that matters to them. They just want to get their job done so they can get home and get home on time, preferably. But again, that's not anything about LibreOffice. That's just human nature. So if nothing else, I guess the takeaway here is that if you are using LibreOffice, make sure you are using the latest version. If you're not, you are missing out on compatibility updates that are pretty much required. Because here's the thing, Microsoft is going to keep releasing new versions of Microsoft Office and Windows and Mac users are especially going to upgrade as soon as those versions come out. And those versions themselves might have new features and LibreOffice is going to have to match those new features as well as compatibility. So if users of Microsoft Office are always upgrading to the latest version, then you as well need to be running the latest version of LibreOffice to keep up with the compatibility of their Office suite. 
And if you have too big of a mismatch, well, yeah, you're going to run into problems. There's just nothing you could do about that. For example, just download the flat pack and remove the distributions version from your computer because that's pretty much useless unless you're on a rolling distro anyway. So just use the flat pack. So I wanted to give you guys my opinion anyway about LibreOffice and its compatibility because it just gets annoying when I see people make false claims that LibreOffice isn't actually as good as Microsoft Office, which is absolutely not true. And I wanted to make this video to set the record straight. Again, it's not very common, but in this video, I get to say that I have physical proof, actual evidence of my claims. LibreOffice is fine. This book is proof of that. So what's your opinion about LibreOffice versus Microsoft Office? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below this video. In the meantime, I'm working on some really cool and amazing content for you guys that I can't wait for you to see. So be sure to subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.